Behind me, I have a 2023 Subaru Forester in the base trim level. And in today's video, I wanna share with you really what makes Subaru, Subaru. And by that, I really mean what comes standard on all Subarus in 2023 and beyond. And really, some of these features and details I'm gonna share with you have been standard on Subarus for well over a decade now. So these are things that are, I think, really important to have and nice to know that you don't have to go up to the highest trim level in Subaru to get. I wanna start with Subaru's boxer engine. This is something that a lot of people think of when Subaru comes to mind, or maybe you've never heard of the Subaru boxer engine and you're curious, why do they call it a boxer engine? Well, I'll tell you, they call it a boxer engine because of the way the pistons are firing. The pistons are firing left and right versus up and down or V-shaped like you see in most other car manufacturers. Subaru is actually the only auto manufacturer that has the boxer engine in their entire lineup of cars. I think Porsche or Porsche, depending on how you are supposed to pronounce that, I honestly don't know how you're supposed to pronounce it. So I'm sure somebody will correct me and let me know the correct pronunciation down in the comment section below. But Porsche, does not have, they have a boxer engine, but they don't have it on their entire lineup. So you hear about that in their cars as well. One of the benefits to having a boxer engine has to do with gravity. And one way is just fighting against the, the gravity when the pistons are firing. So in a, a vertical or V-shaped firing of the pistons, you have gravity pushing down on that. And with the boxer engine, you don't have that so much because they're firing side to side. You see that play out in Subaru's longevity and their reliability because it's no surprise, Subaru has a long track record of producing cars that are reliable, last quite a while, and are also low on maintenance compared to some of your other mixed models. Another cool thing about Subarus that you may notice, if you like to change your oil, you have your oil filter here on the top versus being buried down below there where you have to get up under the car or remove some plastic to remove that filter. But this filter's on top and you have a little catch here as well. So you're not getting oil everywhere and making a mess when you are doing your oil if you like to do that on your own. Another benefit to having the Boxer engine is the low profile of this engine and the center of gravity. If you look at the plastic covering on the top of this engine from the side profile, you'll notice it's probably about five to six inches lower than the side of the car inside of the engine bay. So this boxer engine is mounted really low in the engine bay. What that does is create a low center of gravity. And what that translates to is more stability and more traction when you're driving. Just to give you an example, an SUV like this has a tall roof line and you wouldn't want that to feel top heavy. So with the Forester, the Outback, any of our cars, they have this boxer engine, which sits really low in the engine bay, gives it a lower center of gravity and makes the vehicle stay planted when you're going up and down hills, whether you're going traveling to the mountains or on the main roads. Maybe you come to a sudden stop while you're taking a turn. You're not gonna feel the roof or the top of the vehicle feel like it's moving or feel like it's shifting over. You're gonna have a lot of stability with this car because of that. Another cool thing or neat fact to know is that the Subaru BRZ has one of the lowest centers of gravity for a production car, aside of course from like a Lamborghini or something like that. But the fact that you can get a 30 some odd thousand dollar car with that low center of gravity is really nice to have. Something else that you might not think of immediately when thinking about the design profile of this boxer engine is also where the hood line is. So on the hood line of all of our Subaru SUVs, you see it slopes down quite a bit. Now that might not seem like much, but whenever you're behind the wheel of the car, you'll notice that this hood line is not going to be in your way like some other SUVs. So if you hop in even one of our third row SUVs, I'll go hop in one of those real quick and show you how the hood looks like there as well. So now we'll hop in this Ascent here. I'll show you guys. So this is our largest SUV. And even with this one, you can hardly see the hood here. It doesn't, it's not all up in your face. So again, that's another huge advantage of having a low profile engine is that it's gonna sit lower in the bay and it's not gonna decrease your visibility out front like maybe some of your other 
larger SUVs would. A lot of people think about blind spots in your rear and the Forester has really large windows. So you have excellent visuals in the rear. So on the left or the right, when you're driving and you're trying to look behind you, you'll be able to see cars behind you. And now this car, being that it is a base model, does not have the blind spot indicator. If you're curious what a blind spot indicator looks like on the Subaru's mirrors, they have been positioned for the last few years on the inside here. They used to be out here on the edge of the mirror, but they're much easier to see and larger on the inside. This lights up orange when you have somebody in your blind spot behind your vehicle. You know, a lot of people think about the blind spot in the rear, but they don't think about the blind spot up front as much. In a lot of cars, you'll see that this A pillar is actually blocking your view up front. I'll find a car here in just a second to show you what I mean by that. So here's a Chevy Equinox. You'll notice that the A pillar comes down and your mirror is positioned right here up on the window area and you don't really think about it but there's a blind spot right here where you won't be able to see as easily up in front as you're taking turns we'll hop back over to the forester and i'll show you now the difference so you'll notice now on all subarus the mirror is positioned down here on the door and unlike that equinox you don't have that blind spot right here and subaru actually has this little triangle window here It'd be cool if you could open it up like the old air-cooled volkswagens but you have the ability to see through this more easily so that a pillar is not blocking you and again further playing into Subaru's safety with the visibility in their cars. This next one, if you've watched me for a while, probably about a year, year and a half ago, I made a video talking about this feature right here that's standard in all Subarus and it's always in the rear passenger area. You'll notice a little uh, opening here. It looks like something latches in place and that's because it does. If you look over here on the door, on this corresponding side, there is a steel hook Whenever you close this door, that hook goes into place. All the Subarus have this, no matter what trim level. And the reason it has this is to create more rigidity and more stability with their global platform, the, the C-shaped frame that Subaru is known for. So why is that important to have? Well, on the front of a car and on the rear of a car, you have crumple zones. So that helps reduce impact whenever somebody's in a collision and keeps your passengers safe and keeps that cockpit area safe. But on the side, you don't have as much to work with. So if there is a side impact, that door is liable to get crushed in, trapping people inside, hitting the people inside, and probably hurting them pretty badly if they're hit from a T-bone accident. So what that steel bar does is it adds additional support there for this door keeping your friends, your family, your pets safe inside from a side impact collision. So further improving Subaru safety abilities, keeping people safe and keeping you hopefully from getting hurt in an accident or at least reducing damages that are done in an accident. The next thing that Subaru is known for is their symmetrical all wheel drive system. So all four wheels on all Subarus, with the exception of the BRZ, are gonna move equally. The BRZ is the only one that has rear wheel drive. All other Subarus, doesn't matter which vehicle you get or trim level, will have the symmetrical all wheel drive system. So you don't have to engage this. This, this isn't something that's a, a front wheel drive predominant vehicle and then you have to click a button to engage the rear or some sort of hybrid setup that maybe you don't have to click a button but it still is primarily front wheel drive. This car has the symmetrical all-wheel drive, which again plays into Subaru's safety and abilities to drive in maybe off-terrain environments. If you're going hiking somewhere, going to a trailhead or going kayaking somewhere where you're going up and down a lot of hills, or maybe it's in the snow or rain or gravel, you have a ton of traction with these cars. They work really well in those environments when you need them. Of course, I've mentioned this in many videos, but all Subaru SUVs have 8.7 inches of ground clearance. So you do have the benefit of that for all of the SUVs, the Crosstrek, the Forester, the Outback, the Ascent, they have the exact same 
8.7 inches of ground clearance, unless of course you go with one of our wilderness trim levels in the Outback or the Foresters. Those have just a little bit more ground clearance if you need that or if that is your thing. Another Subaru feature that has actually been, it's become standard, I believe in 2020 and newer this became standard on all Subaru models, but it really started in 2013 being an option and that is the iSight cameras. You'll notice that if you look at a 2013 Outback, I think that was the first model that iSight cameras were available on, they were a lot bulkier. And now you see they are built into the windshield. They're much sleeker. There's a, a much lower profile, so you don't really see those stick out. Open the car here so you can see the inside as well, how the cameras uh, go up flush to the windshield to keep those enclosed and keep them uh, from getting debris or dirt on them or fingerprints from somebody touching them. The benefit to having these eyesight cameras, they're not sensors, they're actual cameras, is that they can detect objects out in front of the car. So if you are driving, so you like to use cruise control, that means you have adaptive cruise control with these eyesight cameras now. What adaptive cruise does is it allows you to set your cruise control at a given speed. So you wanna set it going on the highway at 65 miles an hour. Well, if the car in front of you, say it's this Pontiac Solstice, little two-door convertible, pretty cool little car, we just took it on trade. If that car is in front of you and they're slowing down, your car is gonna automatically adjust speed and slow down as well. So you don't have to turn your cruise control off. It will slow down the car for you. Or, if that car in front comes to a complete stop because there's sudden traffic or an accident ahead, your car is going to also slow down and come to a complete stop. Subaru is one of the only car manufacturers that actually offers that system because they have these cameras instead of sensors. So those cameras, there's two of them there. They have a pretty wide field of view. You can see the cars in front of you and way ahead to help you avoid a collision and just to make driving more enjoyable when you're traveling. So I mentioned the adaptive cruise control, but this also has emergency automatic braking and pre-throttle response. What that means is if somebody is in front of you, maybe your cruise control is not set, but they stop suddenly in front of you. If somebody's walking this way, a pedestrian or a cyclist, and they come in front of the car, if you don't see that in time, your car is going to alert you audibly and visually up on the display of the car that somebody's in front. If you don't try to engage with the car, it's going to automatically stop the car. It's gonna to try to apply the brakes as well as decrease the throttle. So say your foot's still on the gas, it's actually gonna decrease that throttle to help you avoid getting in a collision or running into somebody. So that is a big benefit of having these eyesight cameras up there, which are standard on all but the cars with the manual transmission. If you get a manual transmission BRZ or WRX, you won't have those eyesight systems. But if you have the CVT automatic Subaru, all of them now come standard with that eyesight system. Something all Subaru SUVs are known for is their large cargo capacity and ability to carry a lot of things and have a lot of room if you are traveling. So we'll go ahead and close this cargo cover here. But now the Forester does not have the quick release levers, but some of our other Subaru models, for example, the Outbacks come standard, no matter if you get a base or higher, have these standard quick release levers there. But it drops these seats, drops both seats down. And in all Subaru SUVs, you have this ability to drop the seats down in the second row, or if you're in the ascent, the third row as well, to get additional cargo space whenever you need it. So Subaru, not only caters to safety and reliability, but also practicality. You have tons of room with these cars for camping, for traveling, moving items, even work-related things, whatever it may be, having your pets inside, having your, your dogs inside with their crate. They have all of those things going for them. I hope this video has given you guys some valuable information. If you learned something new today, please be sure to click the like button. Really appreciate it. That helps me out a ton. Hope you guys have a great day. Leave comments below with any questions you have, and I will see you in the next one.